Hey there everybody, uh, this is Daniel again. I uh, saw some of you guys were asking about making games in Blender, uh, especially in Blender 2.5 or 2.6. Um, so I thought I'd leave you guys a little short tutorial series kind of explaining some of the basics of this. Um, in this tutorial we're just going to make a real simple RPG game, um, just with some simple maneuvering and interactions and stuff. Um, so yeah, um, this first part I'm just going to kind of talk about getting everything set up, make sure we know everything's going right. Um, first off, you're going to need Blender. Um, I'm using 2.61, I believe, the most recent as of this time. Yeah, 2.61. And um, I've got it already set up here so that I'm on GLSL. I'm also in the Game Logic tab here. And then uh, using Blender Game instead of the renderer. That just kind of makes my job a little more streamlined. Alright. Um, oh, I think I've already got. Yeah, if you go into User Preferences under Add Ons and then Game Engine, there's just one that allows you to save your game as a runtime. That's there as well. I've got that checked. Okay, and then all of those, once I get those all set up, you just come in here and do save user settings. I want to delete everything here. Alright. Uh, and then here's where my working directory right now for my game is going to be. Alright, so what we're going to do is just create a couple of folders here. The first one's going to be called blends. Okay, so we're going to keep all of our blend files. Um, then in the next file folder, we're going to call this one textures. Uh, and that should be it for now. Alright. So just to make sure everything's up and running correctly, I'm just going to make a real simple scene here. Uh, I'm not going to really go into depth on what I'm doing because we'll get into that later. Um, but basically I'm just going to add a plane for the floor. I'm going to give it a texture here, just real simple. Nothing fancy, we'll just give it like some yellow. Alright. And uh, there we go. I'm going to take down the specular there. Alrighty, and then I'm going to add a cube. And then I'm going to just give it a texture as well. Um, just something different. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. There we go. Uh, now if you notice when we go into shading mode, everything's black. And that's because we don't have a light. So we're going to go ahead and add a light here. Lamp. We're just going to use a um, spotlight this time. It'll give us a cool, um, some cool shadows. Which everybody likes shadows, right? And uh, let's see, we're just gonna kind of eyeball it here. I don't. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this. There we go. That should probably be good enough. Uh, there's our shadow. Yeah. There we go. All right. So we just got a simple setup here. I'm not going to worry about messing with fixing the shadows and all that. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just to make sure that you know our game engine is working, and uh, then also to make sure that we can export the game because that's kind of important. All right, let's go ahead and do that. And we got a little spinning cube guy there. All right, let's go ahead and add a camera real quick. Do do. Whoops. Do do do. There we go. Again, sorry, I'm just kind of speeding through this, but basically you're just going to want to make something that moves around. Um, and the easiest way to do that is once you get this cube here, and you're in this little um, this little tab here, Logic Editor, you're just going to take an Always sensor, meaning that it always does whatever is over here, basically. And in this case, we're just telling it to turn one degree per frame on the Z-axis. All right. Uh, and then when you have a camera put in, now you can see that. Pretty simple. Just add a little bit more light, because, hey, why not? We can. All right. And then we're just going to come in here to Export, and Export Game Engine Runtime. Tutorial. And just put it right under here as Game. All right. Um, one thing is Copy Python. If you know that you're the person you're giving the game to, or whoever is looking at it, has Python installed, you don't need that. But not most people have not very many people have Python installed. Um, so just go ahead and make a Python folder. You're going to do that. Uh, go ahead and save Game Engine Runtime. When it comes time to actually finish the game, I'll show you a little thing we can do to make it look a little nicer um, as far as hiding some of that. All right, this will do its thing. It'll take a couple of minutes. There we go. And now we have an executable file and then this 2.61 file. Okay, this has all the Python stuff that we just exported. Okay, um, all these little things people might need. 
I have no idea why, but you never know. Alrighty, so if we should be able to just play this, press enter, or double click, whatever, it should come up, and that looks familiar. That's about the same as what we had before, so that means we're doing good there. Alright, now that we got everything set up, we can actually start diving in uh, to our little project here. Go ahead and delete these two. And uh, we're going to go ahead and make the player. So go ahead and make a new one here. Alright, there we go. So you can see we've got a brand new setup because since we saved all of our settings over there. Let me make sure I'm really on GLSL. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so just like before, we're going to make a new plane. Okay, go ahead and scale it up by 20. Press S for scale and then type in 20. 20. Alright, it looks a little big, but you'll see it'll be just about right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and press Shift Enter to go into here. Go ahead and. Oh, changed my mind. I'm going to go back. <laughs> uh, let's give it a texture real quick. Just give it a grass texture. And we don't need to worry about naming it or anything um, because it's just extra. Um, we're going to end up deleting it in a little bit, anyways. So, and again, go ahead and take off the specular, make sure it's not shiny, because grass usually isn't shiny. And then we're going to add a cube. G, and then press Z for only on the Z axis, and hold down the control button so it snaps to the grid. There we go, so it's just above there. And again, give it another texture, or another material, rather. And again, it doesn't really matter what we give it, don't really need to name it or anything, it's just here because, you know, I said so. And then, um press shift D to duplicate and we're just gonna make a couple of these around here alright I'm kinda leaving the center area open because that's where our player is going to be um, but I'm gonna stick one right up here just so that we can um, there we go run into it if we need to alright so now we can see we got a little lightly populated little level here um, obviously they don't do anything they just stand there and they're not even people they just are blocks but that's cool um, go ahead and press shift A to create another lamp and this time we're just going to use a hemi lamp. Okay, go ahead and pull it up a little bit. Press uh, Alt Z to go into shaded mode. Yeah, whatever. Uh, all right. Then we're going to rotate. Press R, and then we'll do rotate X. And we'll do 45 degrees, 45. Rotate Z, 45. So now we've kind of got it off at an angle there. That'll give us a nice kind of lighting for maybe like in a. I don't know, some daytime thing. You could even change it a little more if you want to make some... There we go. A little bit better distinction there. Alright. So there's our basic level. Uh, now we're going to add the player. And we'll be done. So let's go ahead and add the player here. Go ahead and top view. Shift A. Mesh. Cube. There we go. Now, this cube is exactly the same size as the other ones. But since you're going to be a person, you're going to need to be a little taller. So go ahead and grab those edges there, and press the G, and then press Z, G for move, Z for on the Z axis, and move it up to little spots there, okay? So now it's twice as tall as everything else. Um, this is, It also is a nice shape for a humanoid character you could fit in there, you know, that's, what we're doing right here is basically just making a, a boxed outline of the character, okay? Uh, and then, if you notice our origin right here, the point that it ro rotates around and the point that it's really paying attention to is actually too low. We want it in the center. So, go ahead and press T with this selected. Uh, and then, origin. Origin to geometry. That means it goes to the center of the geometry or of the uh, mesh that we have there. Alright. Uh, pretty simple that way. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and, because this is our player and he is kind of important and we need to actually keep him, the rest of them will end up deleting at the end, uh, well, towards the end of this file. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and give him a name for his object. Right here it says cube 11, basically. Cube point o o one one, And we're going to go ahead and name that player. Okay, just so we have something to refer back to if we need to later. Um, and then in the materials, give it a new material and call this player as well. Alright, and again, it doesn't really matter what this one looks like because it's going to be invisible in the final game anyways. Uh, if you really want to, you can look in the game engine, but it just is going to look like that. So, now we have our basic character. Let's go ahead and add a camera, and then we'll be finished here for this one. Uh, go ahead and press Shift-A, just like you have all the other times, and press camera. And uh, if you press Alt-R, it'll reset the rotation of everything. Then we're going to rotate it on the x, x axis, 90 degrees. Now you can see it's kind of like that. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. 
pull it up here, kind of look through here and see, you know, how does it look? How is everything, um, you know, if you imagine yourself playing the game, how far back would you want it to be? Uh, personally, I'd probably be right about there. And you can always, uh, what's cool with Blender 2.5 and on, this little grayed out area, once you press P to start the game, it blacks out, so you don't have all this extra stuff, so you really get an idea of what the game's going to look like, which is good. Um, so I might even back that out just a little more. There we go. All right, so that looks pretty good for our basic setup. And uh, that's it for this time. On the next one, we'll come back and talk about um, how to make the character move around a little bit, add 